There's an undeniable connection between music and emotion, and chances are that you can tell that this is happy and uplifting. Maybe this is more sad. And something like this is maybe a little bit more mysterious. In this video, I'm gonna break down 10 chord progressions that hit different emotions and explore why that happens. First of all, it turns out that we feel a lot of emotions, yo. An emotion wheel is a type of visual aid that shows the complexity of emotions that we feel. And it's helpful to identify and work through understanding your own or other people's emotions. And pro tip, this is an excellent tool to help you with your compositions and lyrics. Now, if we look at this, there's so many different emotions. There's fear, anger, surprise, disgust, sad, happy as the major categories. But then there's all these subdivisions, frustrated, distant, abandoned, depressed, optimistic, peaceful, right? Confused, startled. These are all subdivisions. And then we get even farther. There's so many, so many freaking emotions that we can go through. Now, the tricky thing about emotions is that they're very subjective and open to interpretation. In general, we attach concepts and meanings towards things we feel to help us conceptualize and make sense of what's going on with our emotions. To help ground this into something a little bit more objective, let's check out the study where neuroscientists from UC Berkeley mapped out emotional responses to thousands of pieces of music over dozens of genres and correlated and kind of condensed and curated 13 overarching feelings as tags in this kind of interactive mood space. Let me show you what I mean. All right, so this thing is pretty dope. I will throw the link in the description if you wanna check it out, where you can actually hover your mouse over all of these different pieces of music where people mapped out their emotional responses and they did this study, right? And this is kind of what they pinpoint as the main feelings that people described as well as the kinds of music that go along with them. And they mapped this out in terms of valence and arousal. So valence meaning the type of feeling. So this could be amusing, erotic, calm, or triumphant, anxious, annoying, etc. And the other kind of plane, their kind of measurement was the level of emotion, okay, which is like the intensity of that feeling. So as you can see, calm, although it's a calming feeling, it was very intense, as you can see, right? And so is scary, annoying, or anxious. They are very intense emotions where dreamy emotions, something that's amusing, something that's cheerful, is a little bit more in the middle of the road, right? Where it's a cool feeling, but it's not as intense. So the one axis they called valence for the type of emotion and the Y axis they called arousal for how strong the emotion felt. It's crazy how you could totally see this as frequency for vibe and amplitude for intensity, right? So the emotion you're feeling is the vibe, right? That's the vibe that you're feeling. You've probably felt this in your day to day where people have vibes or situations will give you a good vibe, a bad vibe, a weird vibe, etc. And then you could see the amplitude as the intensity of that vibe. Like maybe someone's just a little bit of an asshole and they join your party and you're like, okay, this guy's kind of weird, but we're going to roll with it. But it's a weird kind of feeling versus someone broke into your house is going to about to like steal all your studio gear, right? Different levels of intensity. And you could totally map this to frequency and amplitude that we feel as human beings, yo, because we're vibrational beings, yo, you know what I'm saying? Now, as awesome as that study is, one thing to note is that includes everything about the music, the instruments, the tones, the performance, the style, etc. There's a lot of factors that contribute to how music affects us as well, our mood, our tastes, and even the context that we're listening it to, right? Like if you're listening to a piece of music while working out versus when you're in your backyard chilling like a villain, you're probably going to have a different context to how you experience the music. There's also a ton of other musical elements that contribute to the emotions we feel. But to keep things simple for this video, we're going to examine one of the core pieces of DNA that transmits these emotions, which is the harmony, and more specifically, those chord progressions. Before we get into chord progressions, what's interesting is that a single chord by itself can create a pretty specific emotion. If you search anywhere online about how chords evoke emotions, you'll find a lot of interpretations and graphs just like this one. So if we go through the chords on this list 
and the associated emotions, we can start to get the building blocks for how we connect these chords together to create more fleshed out emotional experiences, right? So if we look at chord type one, right, which is a C major, sounds like this. This is happiness, cheerful, confidence, brightness, satisfaction, etc. If we go to minor now, sadness, darkness, right? Melancholy, depression, etc. Now, if we look at a dominant chord, which sounds like this, we get a little bit of funkiness, soulfulness, like a little bit of edge to that kind of chord, right? If we go to the next one, which is a major seven chord, we get a little bit of romance, right? Jazziness, softness, right? A little bit more sophistication, right? If we go to a minor seventh, sounds like this. We get a little bit of that mellowness and jazziness and kind of sophistication, right? Cool, cool, cool. If we go to a ninth, right, we start to introduce this idea, this feeling of openness, right? So here's a major chord with an added nine. That nine on top kind of opens things up, right? If we go to a diminished chord, right, we get a lot of tension, a lot of dissonance. Right, yikes, that's that's a lot of ugh, shock, fear, surprise, etc. So if we go to something like a suspended fourth, which is a C sus four, sounds like this. Right, if we put that four in a higher octave, otherwise it can sound like this. Right, we get this kind of tension, but it's kind of delightful, right? Again, it's kind of open, but again, it's still a little bit tension, right? If we move on to a C7, a dominant chord with the flat nine on top, we get a really creepy, ominous, dark chord, right? So here's our dominant chord at that flat nine. It's like, oh my God, something is really going wrong. And for a last example, let's go with like a minor seven flat five, which again is that diminished chord, but we add that minor seven on top, right? It's still very dissonant, but it's got a little bit of drama, right? Like it's less sharp than just a basic um, diminished triad. So let me know in the comments down below if you agree or don't agree with some of those descriptions and associations with those chords and where did they come from? Well, an earlier study by German scientists pushed this even further and showed how these individual chord types just played on their own, provoked measurably wide ranges of emotion. And from their findings from this study, it seems that each chord's distinctive sound was connected to a particular mood or emotion. Now, this is where things get interesting. Once we start combining these different chords to create progressions, we create the harmonic DNA of how music hits us emotionally. One of the main things to keep in mind about chord progressions and how they pull us emotionally is that context is everything. So what do I mean by context is everything? Well, let's just play a simple chord, C major seven, right? I could also play it like this. Very open, very positive, sophisticated, happy sound, right? And this is anchoring us towards C as our base, right? But if I go ahead and change the context of what we're listening to, so let's say I go ahead and make A the base. And we anchor our ears there. And I play those same notes in the chord. Right now, those same exact notes sound a lot darker, right? Because the context is actually an A minor scale. So it recontextualizes the same exact notes. So with that said, depending on the context of not only the tones and the chord, but the chords and the progression will change how we interpret and how we move into those different chords. Think about how we react and feel about things in our day-to-day. -day. It's 100% because of the context. In a chord progression, the musical context will be created by the first chord we hear, and our ear is going to reference what the bass is playing. So the same kind of idea is exactly the same with chord progressions. And by far, what you start the progression with will give you the most information about the context of the harmony. So all of the things that really affect us emotionally, like denying expectation, surprise, unstable versus stable, the duration, the tempo, and the rhythmic timing will all affect 
the context of how we experience a chord progression. But at the end of the day, what we're really hearing is the movement between starting from home base and going on a journey, usually returning home. And one way that I like to interpret emotion is energy in motion. And without going too deep down the rabbit hole, this is actually a great metaphor for how context affects us in our day to day. So let's say you're driving down the highway and somebody just like cuts you off speeding like crazy and you know, puts you in danger and you're like, what the hell? And you're kind of pissed off at this person for being so inconsiderate on the road. So that's your framing is like, this person is just kind of an asshole, right? Maybe later on you learn more about the context where, hey, they're rushing to the hospital because like their kid got hurt, right? So now it's like, oh wow, like I would probably be doing the same if I was in that situation. So the context has changed, but the actual thing that they did had it doesn't. So the context changed in that situation and you might feel differently about it. All right, so here's 10 different chord progressions for 10 different emotions. All right, so let's start with progression number one. What I'll do is I'll play it so you can get your ears around it and then we'll talk about it a little bit and I'll break down some of what's going on. I won't go super deep down the rabbit hole. If you wanna learn more about music theory in depth and get a really strong foundation, I'll link a video up above where you could watch that, okay? So let's go ahead and play progression number one. Okay, so to me, this is very hopeful, dreamy, yearning, kind of ethereal. And this is using the Lydian mode, which we'll talk about more in just a sec. But this is really like you have a crush on somebody in high school, just innocent, pure love. And I searched up the meaning of happiness on Google, the best authority around the world, right? Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, so it's basically a feeling or showing pleasure or contentment, right? Having a sense of confidence in or satisfaction with a person arrangement or a situation, which sounds pretty straight up, okay? All right, so let's break down what's going on a little bit with this progression and why it makes us feel so happy. So first of all, we're in the key of G, right? That's our home base. And we're starting on this one chord, which is a major chord. Then we're going down to this five chord. Then we're going to this minor three. And then this is where things get interesting. We go to this major two, and then we go back home. So that's actually telling us this major two that we're in this Lydian mode, which is very bright and uplifting, almost even more bright than just a traditional major scale. So aside from being in this super bright Lydian mode, right, which is like the chord movement, we also have these really ni ex nice extensions that color the harmony and really inject a lot of beauty and openness in my opinion, to this progression. So if we look at this, you know, G major, well, we're adding a nine here, right? Which, ooh, right in the heartstrings, that extra nine, right? Then we're moving down to this five and we're actually not coloring it. We're just kind of doing this four voicing where we're not making it major or minor. That kind of sound, right? So going from this to this, just straight up. And then this minor seven, Right? A lot of that kind of sophisticated minor sound and then back home to the major two chord, right? Which has some interesting voice leading from here, down here. Cool, so altogether it's those added ninths and the suspended fourths, in my opinion, that really add that openness to this already bright Lydian mode, right? So we got this minor seven. Right, then we're going here, adding the four. Beautiful. Let's move on to progression number two. Let me play it. So to my ears, this is definitely sad, a little depressing, a little dramatic. And this could be saying goodbye to a loved one or like a pet of yours that has passed away. And there's some dissonance in there. And it's almost like to me, like it hurts, but there's some deep love hidden underneath the pain. And it's definitely slow and sobby, affected with expressive grief or unhappiness. All right, so let's break down the second chord progression a little bit more. So the first thing is that we're starting on A minor and we're adding in that nine on top. Right, making this a lot more dramatic. Right, and then from there, we're moving to the 
E minor seven, right? And this E minor seven is the three chord. So we're starting here. Then we're going to the minor three chord. So we're definitely in the key of A minor, right? Then things get uplifted a little bit. We go to the six chord, right? Major chord, F major, have that seven on top. And then we go to this D minor, which is the four chord, right? But we're adding in that nine and that dissonance, right? So this whole first half of the progression is like pretty dramatic, sophisticated and uplifting, breath of fresh air, a lot of dissonance. Then for the second half of that progression, we're actually jumping back to the F major sound, but we're losing that major seven. Then we're going to A minor seven, right? So then we're going back to where we started, but with that more sophisticated sound. Right, so we're kind of grounding ourselves into like, oh, maybe there's a little bit of hope here, even though it's very sad. Then we're going down to D minor seven. Right, again, our four chord, but just with a seven this time, less dissonance. And then we're adding in the four on top, staying on D. Right, this kind of suspended sound. And then we're going back home, which that's our home because it's kind of the first chord we started at. So all together, this is a pretty moody, sad, and heartfelt progression, right? We go A minor, add that nine, three chord, right? Sophisticated seventh, F major seven, then a lot of dissonance, right? On the four chord, yikes. And then we're back to F major, a little bit of hope, sophisticated at the home chord, right? Then we're going down to the D and then we're going and we're adding that open sound to resolve back here. All right, let's listen to progression number three. So to me, this sounds like you just kicked some ass and now you're ready to brag to your friends about it back home. So it's definitely like a cheesy victory vibe okay after maybe you've won a battle or a contest you're victorious and you have a feeling of expressing this jubilation after having won a victory and mastered some difficulty all right so let's break down this triumphant chord progression okay so basically this is actually also in the key of a minor so we're starting on a minor seven then we're moving down to this e minor seven which is our three chord then we're moving to this G major, which is our seven chord in the key of A minor. And then we're moving down to this D5 sound, right? So very stable, although minor, right? But a lot more stable. So again, we got this A minor seven, E minor seven. Then we're going to the G major seven chord. And then we're staying to this very stable D sound. Then we're going and we're getting a little bit of interesting bass movement here. We have the C major chord with E in the bass, right? Then we're doing that same kind of C major chord with C in the bass, right? Very Hans Zimmer vibe. Then we go to G in the bass, G chord, and then we're moving down to D major over F sharp. So the interesting thing about this progression is the last chord of the whole progression, this D major over F sharp, right, is a borrowed chord, okay? So we're kind of borrowing that chord from outside the notes that live inside of A minor, right, to create a little bit more of that uplifting effect, right, that triumphant effect. And that's really what injects that positivity, hope, confidence into this chord progression. Hey, and if these chord progressions are inspiring you to create a track inspired by them, I encourage you to go ahead and grab my free workflow system that will help you create a track from beginning to end. Just go ahead and click the link below in the description, enter your name and email, and you'll get access to this workflow wizardry template that will guide you from start to finish to finish a track with all the action items built in for every stage of the system. It's a whole thing. And you'll also get a PDF that walks you through all the best practices on how to use the system and finish some amazing sounding music that you love. So again, if you want it, link is in the description. Let's move on to chord progression number four.
All right, so what I get from this is epicness with a pinch of mystery. Imagine you've just stumbled upon an epic pyramid temple that looks epic, but you're also scared of booby traps and mummies, and oh yeah, the terminal dehydration that could happen from being in the desert. So to me, there's definitely an exotic Eastern feel with a feeling of reverential respect mixed with fear and or wonder. All right, so let's break down this epic chord progression. So it's actually pretty simple in terms of chord voicings, but what's more interesting is the chordal movement and the relationship between the chords not exactly fitting in a specific scale. So there's like some borrowed chords going on, making it cool. All right, so what's going on here? We're starting on D major, strong, epic, right? Cool. And then we're moving to this F major, add 13. Right? So right away, right? We're, we have a major one chord and then a major three chord, which is very unusual, right? It has this very specific sound because we're not in a minor tonality because we have the major one and we're definitely not in a major scale because a major scale has a minor three chord, not a major three chord. So that first movement already pulls our ear to an interesting place. It's like, oh, we're not in major or minor. We're in this cool, in between mysterious epic place. Then from there, we're going to D sharp major seven, right? So again, this is our built on the flat two, right? Our second degree, which could be seen like Phrygian has a flat two chord that is major, but, they re but Phrygian resolves down to minor. Progression number five. So to me, this progression is definitely like, imagine a huge pad, slow down the BPM, add some reverb, get a meditation app, some binaural beat vibes, right? Like super chill, relaxing, super happy. You could also see this as like the background music for some weird car commercial or software app that you don't really need, <laughs> right? And basically the idea of calm comes up for this with me. And again, part of the music and part of delivering an experience would be the other components. So maybe slowing down the BPM and having a more relaxing pad instead of a grand piano, right? Um, and basically calm is just the absence of mental stress or anxiety, easiness, relaxation, a feeling of refreshing tranquility, and the absence of tension or worry. Let's break it down. So this progression is beautiful. And for the sake of this one, let's turn up the reverb and the reverb time, make it super, super juicy. You know what I'm saying? So we're starting off on this B major tonality, adding the nine, right? So here's our B major. And then we're adding this nine. Beautiful, right? And then we're just hitting the octave and the voice leading for the second chord, right? So chord one, second chord. Right, then we're moving down to this E major at nine. So down here, there's our E major. We'll add the nine, right? Then we have a dissonant C sharp minor at nine. So here's C sharp, right? Minor, add the nine, a little bit of drama, but still beautiful in context, right? So the first half of this progression, again, we're starting on this B, right? Major at nine, going up there, doing then a little bit of drama. So for the second half of this progression, we have some interesting inversions and bass movement as well. So for the second half, we got this kind of F sharp major at the nine as well, but we have the um, A sharp in the bass instead. So I'm gonna kick this up an octave. There's our F sharp and we have A sharp in the bass. Then we're going back home to where we started. Then we go G sharp minor, a little bit of drama, and then the same G sharp adding the seven on top, but then F sharp in the bass over here. So that whole progression goes something like this. We're starting off on again, the B major, add the nine, then hit the octave, right? Then down here, E major with the nine in there and then some drama, C sharp minor. Then we're going up here to this interesting inversion here, right? This beautiful chord. Then we're dropping back to where we started. Then we're going down to G sharp minor. And then we're adding the seven, but F sharp in the bass. 
So just kick back, relax, and absorb yourself in these tones. Let's move on to progression number six. Okay, so to me, this is either like your Thanos or you just found out that you sent your nudes to your Uncle Bob instead of Bay. <laughs> um, so this is being thrown into a state of fear, fright, or panic, or you could see it from the other side, like plotting and intense hatred, right? Really strong feeling of discomfort and tension. Let's break it down. All right, so let's break down this kind of disgusting, evil sounding chord progression, right? So we're starting off with D sharp in the bass. Right? And then a C minor chord on top. So right away, this is a lot of dissonance, for especially for home bass. And then we're just moving to this D minor chord. Right? So very jagged and very unsettling right off the bat. We're going to C minor. So we go down here. And then D sharp minor again. Right? So kind of this like weird haunted circus clowns attacking you vibe. Ah, it's not good. Ugh. And then we go to this C minor with E in the bass. Ooh, ouch. Super dissonant, you know, chromatic movement in the bass from where we started. And then we go to E minor, right? A little bit of resolve, if you want to call it that. Then we go to A sharp minor, then F sharp minor, and then back home. <laughs> Ugh. But you throw a little sustain on there and you can get real horror movie terrifying vibes. Progression number seven. So to me, this is very classically pleasantly entertained, right? So basically amusement, right? Like this is very classical framing around it, but amusing, right? Like if you think in a modern context, it's like the Super Mario theme, right? It's like, yo, we're having a good time. And being amused, according to Google, is pleasantly entertained or diverted uh, by something funny or interesting and basically showing a smile, showing an amused smile. All right, all right, all right. So this progression is pretty classical vibes, you know what I'm saying? Um, so it just has very strong resolution from a lot of classical music and functional harmony, etc., which gives it that like pleasant, nice, waltzy classical vibe, you know what I'm saying? But it's amusing, you're right? This is entertaining, you know what I'm saying? If, if you were a king, you would probably be clapping at this most likely. Cool? Okay, so we're starting at uh, the fantastic E major cool beans then we're jumping up to the fifth chord which is b major right super classic and then we're going to this a minor which is actually borrowing the four chord from the parallel minor it's a little bit of modulation but then we're resolving back home and then we're going down to the minor six chord over here right and then we're jumping up to this e major over a flat and then finally finishing off on the dominant five chord to resolve back to the one right so all together we got this one five borrowing the four back one one going to the minor six one chord with an interesting bass thing dominant five back home and then you bow <laughs> progression number eight
So to me, this is like probably shouldn't have eaten so many mushrooms. Um, or you're like Bowser or some evil villain plotting in a movie or a video game, whatever. And according to Google, anxiety is the feeling of fear, dread, or uneasiness. It might cause you to sweat, feel restless, tense, and have a rapid heartbeat. Um, and it could be a normal reaction to stress or like if you eat McDonald's, right? <laughs> so let's break down this kind of really evil, anxious chord progression, which is like, you know, you're either gonna get murdered or you're plotting on putting nanobots and everything as a conspiracy or some other crazy thing like that, right? It's just so dark. <laughs> so let's break it down. We're basically starting off with A minor over C. So nothing that we haven't seen before, but here's our A minor chord. And then we have C in the bass. So that creates a lot of tension already, right? This relationship is uneasy. Then we're keeping the C as kind of a pedal tone in the bass and then moving to F minor. And that's super crunchy, right? This, ooh, that's very sharp. Then we're going back to A minor over C and then we're just going to C minor so we could jump up here, right? So that's the first half of this progression, just moving these minor chords with C in the bass. Right, it kind of has that like evil marchy kind of thing, right? <laughs> uh, this jagged movement. So then the second half of this progression is almost the same, but we're just changing these minor chords to diminished chords still with C in the bass, right? Then we're going down here to the F diminished. Then we're going up to the C diminished. And then we're moving up to B in the bass with this F diminished chord, which creates this kind of tritone augmented chord. And that's where we're finishing off. So altogether, just pedal tone with C in the bass. And we're changing to diminished chords. Yikes. Progression number nine. So to me, this chord progression is very energizing. It's very like a cl constantly climbing feeling, like it's not resolving and you're continuing to climb up and up and up and up, right? So imagine this with high BPM, like let's do a cardio workout, let's play Rainbow Road on Mario Kart kind of vibe, right? Um, and in Google, to energize means someone to give them enthusiasm or determination to do something. Like, so to me, this definitely creates some energy in my body where it's like, oh, I kind of want to move. And it's like a continuing unresolved thing, but it's still uplifting and upbeat. Let's break it down. All right, so this progression is pretty damn cool um, because of the, again, moving shapes. And that's something that I really love about push and guitar is the ease of use of moving shapes to get these really cool progressions. So we're starting off on G, right? So we're in the key of G, kind of in the Dorian mode, but kind of jumping outside of the Dorian mode. Um, so we're doing this G minor seven, right? Then we're moving up whole step, A minor seven, right? Then we're going to B minor seven at 11, right? That's really cool. Then we're jumping up to D minor seven at 11, right? So that's a really cool upward staircase motion, right? And you can see it's the same kind of chord shape. We've got the minor seven, G minor seven, A minor seven, B minor seven with the openness vibe, the 11 on top, and then same with the D, openness with the 11 on top. So the second half of this progression starts off the same, G minor seven, going to A minor seven, then we're borrowing a chord and we're going to A major, right? And we're adding on this nice six on top, right? Then we're going to F major with C in the bass, right? So really interesting progression and some cool borrowing chords in there as well, right? So the whole thing wrapped up, we're doing G minor seven, right? So into A minor seven, telling us that we're in the Dorian mode right here. And then we're going to this B minor seven with the 11. So we're borrowing this chord and then we're going up to the D minor, same shape, which is back in key, right? So we're kind of modulating a little bit. And again, we're leveraging that uh, movable shape. Right, that's the first half. Then we're going back down here. Then we're shifting to A major, and then we're going down here. And then restarting. 
right? So if I just hold my sustain pedal and hit the basic chord voicings, right? You can feel that this doesn't really resolve. Right, it just kind of keeps going and keeps going. Progression number 10. So to me, this chord progression really is defiant, right? And it's really hard to really get that nuance with a grand piano. But if you had this with like a really heavy seven string, eight string guitar with a lot of distortion, this would be hella metal, you know what I'm saying? And yeah, it's really got that defiant energy where it's like, screw authority, screw all these people, like really pointing up the middle fingers to people, you know what I'm saying? A good way to think about this is like, if you go way too deep down the rabbit hole of the Illuminati, central banks, ancient bloodline families, evil corporations and mind control, or you could just see it as a video game boss level, okay? But basically, defiance is proudly refusing to obey authority and having like a defiant attitude or general like feeling towards things, right? So if you really do not like something and you wanna fight against it, this is kind of the feeling I would get. Let's break it down, right? So Hungarian minor, super esoteric. It's like a mode of the double harmonic major scale. Like that, that's beyond my thing, but it's a cool scale. If you wanna make some villain music, some metal, whatever it is. And it starts off on a chord that we haven't seen yet, which is a minor major seven chord. So it starts off on G, right? And we also have a minor sound, but we also have the major seven. So a G minor major seven chord. Think James Bond. This is the James Bond chord. It's definitely a question mark kind of vibe. You know what I'm saying? Then we're moving to this E flat major seven. Then we're going to this B flat major seven with a flat five, which you can play like this. Another big question mark chord. And then we're going down to this kind of dominant C sharp chord. Right, if we play the whole thing, there's some beauty in there with those major seven chords, but it's still very uneasy and unsettling, right? So, right, G minor major seven, holy man. Then we're going over here to E flat major seven, then this major seven with the flat five, this dominant chord, restarting, E flat major seven, back here, and then resolving to D major seven, then back home. That's home base, believe it or not. So I wanna know, how did these progressions make you feel? Did you feel the same as I did with the descriptions I gave them? Or did you feel something else? Let me know in a comment down below. If you wanna learn the theory behind all the stuff that we talked about in depth, I encourage you to watch this video next where I break down all the foundations so you can hit the ground running and just get your mind around music theory. So if you're ready, I will see you in that video.